creep crawler. Jesus, they're really coming at me. There we go. Crap. Holy crap. <laughs> oh my god. Hey guys, it's Sukasa. Welcome to Seven Days to Die. This is an awesome indie early access gem of a game that I've fallen in love with recently. And uh, I'm going to do a little bit of an overview video, talk about what the game's all about, and show you guys some tricks and, and things that I've figured out on a little bit of a walkthrough, basically, of how to survive the first day. And uh, maybe it'll turn into a bit of a let's play. We'll see. Um, so, Seven Days to Die. What is it? Well, how would I explain this? Um, have you ever wanted a Walking Dead style zombie apocalypse game that's open world and sandbox in the style of Minecraft? With that sort of Minecraft-like crafting and building and destructible world terrain, but without pixelated graphics. And with more realistic survival mechanics, including you know, hunger, thirst, disease, oh, and, and guns. Well, if you've been wanting to play that game, then look no further than Seven Days to Die. No, Bill wants to. <laughs> So me and my real life friend, we both picked this up at the same time on Steam on the, the holiday sale that's going on right now until January 2nd. Uh, we got it on one of the daily sales, that flash sales, for 50% off, 12 bucks. And I gotta say, it's one of the best 12 bucks I've spent on a game in a long time. Um, now I don't know if they're gonna do another daily sale like that, but it does have a persistent 30% off until January 2nd when the Steam sale's over, so $17. And I gotta say, had I spent 17 on it, I would not be disappointed. Hell, had I paid full price, I still would not be disappointed. It truly is an indie, early access gem of a game. Now, I know you hear words like alpha and indie and uh, <laughs> early access game, and red flags go up, warning, warning. I, I know, you're thinking, oh my god, not another one of these you know, half-finished, content-lacking, buggy-ass, developer-abandoned, dying-on-the-vine games. And you would be right, there are a lot of them out there like that, but this is not one of them. Not at all. Now, I've had my eye on the game since it came out a little bit more than a year ago, maybe 14, 15 months, and uh, I, I kept checking back on it, but I kept it at arm's distance because of that very same sentiment. And I gotta say, the devs have really proven themselves to me. It released with Alpha Build 1, and it was a very rough, early, in-studio type Alpha Build. It wasn't just feature incomplete, it was graphics incomplete. <laughs> you can see it in the old videos on YouTube. It looks blocky, and it doesn't even look like the same game. But they've kept up with a dedicated and disciplined release schedule, constantly working and improving the game, smoothing out the graphics, uh, updating the gameplay, progression, balance, adding content with like every patch. Just about every aspect of the game has been and is continually being improved. It started in Alpha Build 1, and it's up to Alpha 10.4 now, so they've done more than one patch a month. It's a very impressive, uh, dedicated mindset, almost a Mojang mindset that they have towards updating and improving their game, so there's no risk of dev abandonment. It's not a buggy mess, not at all, and the uh, 38, 40 hours playing multiplayer together me and my real life friend have done, uh, we've had like no netcode issues, solid rec it's really solid net code, it seems. A lot of AAA titles uh, have issues, and this one doesn't. Uh, there's no major bugs to speak of that we've encountered. A few minor ones here and there. Um, there's really only one I can think of off the top of my head that was a minor annoyance. Uh, but no crashes at the desktop. Uh, it's just a very solid play experience, impressively so for, for an alpha. And it's very feature complete. I didn't even realize it was an alpha still, not at first. Uh, I didn't realize the version of the game down there uh, during the first play session, and it played for several hours, and I would have said that it was halfway through beta. It was that solid of performance with no crashes and uh, tons of content. It was only after closing the first play session when I looked down there and saw it was alpha 10, and my mind went... <laughs> <laughs> FPS performance? Not bad overall for an alpha build. It runs better than the current version of Minecraft, for me at least. Um, but me and my friend, neither of us had had any hitches or stuttering, nothing like that. Uh, no major frame slowdowns. Uh, the frames would dip when switching between biomes and uh, when a lot of enemies would, were nearby, the frames would go down. Um, but nothing major game breaking as far as the performance. Uh, I'm running a 780Ti, uh, fairly high-end hybrid, but on mostly max settings. So these can always be turned down some. Uh, if you're having issues. Uh, it does obviously still need some optimization, but for an alpha build, it's fairly impressive performance, I'd say. Now, one of the best, most impressive things about the game is just how simple it is to get multiplayer up and going. There's no convoluted BS steps uh, like 
in the past with Minecraft or Terraria or a plethora of other games. You don't need any me BS like uh, Himachi, Himachi, how you pronounce that. You don't need that. You don't need to mess with port forwarding. You don't need to run a separate server instance in the background. And you don't even need to know your friend's IP addresses. The devs have put a lot of work into making sure that it's super simple, click and go, and you can do it all right here through the game window. And I'm very impressed that they had this sort of functionality in an alpha build. Uh, it's just, it's mind blowing to me. Now, like I say, if you want to do like simple multiplayer with just you and your friend, or maybe two or three friends, um, there's you can easily just have one person or have yourself host the game and everyone else just joins it. You don't need to rent a server or anything like that. Um, now, if you want to host like you know 20 people, you need to rent a server. But it's just small scale uh, co-op multiplayer. You can do that brilliantly through this, and um, just make sure everyone that's going to be playing together has each other on the Steam friends list. And uh, whoever's going to host the game, just go to New Game and uh, select Survival Multiplayer. Of course, you can play single player if you want, but this is if you want to do a multiplayer match, uh, you cl click that. Set up the options in here, put a game name in, and load it up. And then um, once that person has loaded it and is in the game world, everyone else that's going to join, just click connect to server. And in here, you'll see like every server that's being hosted at the moment, um, which is crazy because there's almost 3,000 of them, and it's past 3.30 a.m. here where I'm at in the U.S. <laughs> so the game's pretty popular, and there's a lot of people playing it. But what you're looking for in here is the fourth tab to get rid of all this clutter. This tab will show you the friends. So anyone on your Steam friends list that's hosting a game right now will show up in here. And it will look like, like this. And you just uh, click it and go. It just join that simply. It's awesome, simple functionality that uh, I find very impressive. Okay, let's set up our, uh, our walkthrough Let's Play world here, and whenever you start up a, a new game, there are many, many options to choose from here, and uh, which is awesome. More options is always better, and the nice thing is you're not locked into it. So if you've been playing for a couple of hours and you're like, you know what, I didn't really want to go with this option, or I wanted to change this or that, no worries, you don't have to start over. Every time you load up your save file, uh, it gives you all these options again, so you can tweak all of them every time you load up the game. That's an awesome feature. Now, briefly though, if you're playing multiplayer, don't forget to change the setting in here to be a private game. And don't be a silly billy. Give yourself a password so D-bags can't mess with you and your friends. One last thing that's specific to multiplayer is the uh, drop on quit. I do not know why this is even an option. Basically, whenever you quit playing, you log out, it will drop your stuff. So be sure that's set to nothing so you lose nothing whenever you quit playing. It's a silly option. Anyway, though, we're not going to play multiplayer. We want to set up a single-player map. And we're going to use the game world of Navisgain. Navisgain County, Arizona. This is a very large map that's custom-built by the devs, and uh, it's really, really well done. It's got you know buildings and well-spaced biomes and loot and everything you're going to need. Uh, I highly recommend you roll with this for your first couple of maps. And uh, when you get tired of that, though, there's always the random-generated, procedurally-generated seed world um, that you can you can pick uh, but we don't want that we want that this game and it of course gives you many options to choose from to customize everything you want uh, from the difficulty of the monsters their aggression and so on and so forth loot abundance all sorts of stuff but the most important things in here are drop on death now this setting uh, by default drops everything when you die just like minecraft However, in Minecraft, you only have five or eight minutes to get back to your corpse. Uh, there's no time limit here on that, but if you die again, you will lose its marker on your map, and you'll have to kind of randomly guess where it was, and it can be very frustrating and disheartening early on to keep losing everything you acquire. Um, so because of that, I would recommend, since you're going to die a lot probably, we can change this. There's no lose nothing option, but there is the lose the tool belt items only. Now the tool belt is your hot bar. The eight items that can fit on your hot bar. If you die, those are the only things that get left behind on your corpse. So I would recommend rolling with that. Um, also, uh, enemy memory. Now, this is how long in real life seconds a the enemies will stay aggroed onto you. 60 seconds can feel like a freaking eternity, and it can feel like you're never running them off. So you get the hang of things and how to sneak around stuff and not aggro stuff, highly recommend you bump that down to like 45 or even 30 seconds. Um, another thing that's super important is uh, to take into account 
nighttime. Kind of like in Minecraft, things get nasty at night. Well, here they get really nasty at night. And um, you know, early on, when you're first learning the game, you want the night to be as short as possible. Um, so you can change your 24 hour cycle. Uh, right now, by default, it's 40 minutes for a full day night cycle. At 40 real life minutes, you can change it to be whatever you want, like four hours, two hours, an hour, up down to 10 minutes. I'm gonna leave it on the default 40 minutes, but I'm gonna change the percentage of that that's nighttime from the default 35 down to 20. You could also set it to 50 50, 20 minutes a day, 20 minutes a night, but I don't really want that. I want less nighttime. So I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna leave the difficulty sitting on medium nomad. Um, you could do all sorts of different options for that. I'm going to leave aggression on normal. Uh, Feral gets crazy, but there are a whole bunch of hard mode options if you want them. I think that's about it, though. I'm going to uh, name this suit craft and uh, load it up, and I'll be right back. All right. We've uh, spawned in here. It looks like it's given us a good spot. Uh, it does spawn you in seemingly random locations in different biomes. Uh, I kind of like this location. It's kind of a green area. Uh, looks pretty idyllic and peaceful until you hear zombies see them. Oh my god. Obviously the first thing you want to do is uh, hit your crouch button. <laughs> go, in, go into crouch. Uh, it's got, oh god, it's got very similar mechanics as to uh, Minecraft, or sorry, not Minecraft, uh, Oblivion or Skyrim. Uh, Elder Scrolls type crouching and got the eye and everything. I'm being hunted by this bitch. Um, first thing I'm going to want to do, get a little bit of distance and pull off these things. Just in case I die, I don't want to lose them. This should do some damage. Oh no, you die. <laughs> it's pretty fun setting zombies on fire, I can't lie. I'm gonna smack and back. Smack and back, that's your best strategy. Um. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm gonna take that off there too. Its durability is going down pretty fast. So, uh, loot him up. What's some of the first things we want to do? Well, obviously we're gonna need a, a real weapon here, but that's gonna take some time. We can use a makeshift weapon. Um, and to get started with that, first things first, we need to uh, pick up some rocks. You see these small stones? You're gonna see them all over the freaking place. Pick that up. Oh boy. Yeah, see, the zombies are attracted to sound. You start killing zombies, and uh, they're gonna start coming out of the freaking woodworks. We have a stick. Uh, so we have the stone. We need to punch some grass and get some grass. Now, a piece of grass. Oh my gosh. A piece of grass. Put it in here and cook it into a plant fiber. And while it's cooking, you can close the window. You don't lose it. It doesn't get thrown out on the ground like Minecraft. Oh, shit. Alright, let's take our small stone, cook it into a sharp stone. Shit. Next thing, we're gonna need a stick. And we can find these from what I call stick bushes. This is what a stick bush looks like, at least in this biome. Crap. Now, oh my gosh, they're really coming at me. The sharp stone. Oh crap, I need more distance. Run away, run away. Interestingly, you can sprint while pushing, while walking backwards, which is really weird. <laughs> You can also sprint while crouched. Alright, align these things like this in that precise order in all of these spots. It's not like Minecraft, you can't just put it anywhere. That gives us a stone axe. And we'll cook that up, and we'll have a makeshift weapon, as well as an ability to tear down some trees and other things. Holy crap, that is a lot of guys. Alright, smack and back. Aiming for the head, obviously, and for zombies. Headshots do definitely count. Ah, he got me. Stunned me too. I can't move very fast when stunned. Move these things up. Tin can. Give me a real weapon, damn it. Sometimes they'll drop like a club or something. You know? Oh my god. Got a creep crawler. Creep crawler. Jesus, they're really coming at me. Holy crap. <laughs> oh my god. One piece of grass here. I need that in a second. I'm gonna 
cook those two into plant fiber. There we go, little guy. These bloated walkers have significantly more hit points. Jesus. Die. Give me something good. Ah. Come on. Jesus. Like every freaking zombie in the post apocalyptic world is aggroed onto me. <laughs> Alright, big boy first. Fatty my fat fuck. You gonna die. Axe to the face. Jesus. There we go. Who wants some? Shit. Everywhere. Oh my god, I didn't miss that. Come on, I want to loot these bodies before they disappear. Stop spawning, they're swarming me. That was intense. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ah, uh, not another one. Oh good, a short iron pipe. Can grab this cotton too. We can uh, do stuff with that. Make some cotton apparel. Um, that was, uh, oh no, no. Hit that stun. Okay, let's see what we got here. Oh, we got painkillers. I'm going to use that to get some of my hit points back here. Now, unlike Minecraft, it's not left click to do things, it's right click. Just takes a little bit of getting used to. Alright. Now, those plant fibers. Good. I need sticks. It looks like there's plenty of stick bushes around here. Awesome. I forget how many I need. I think like eight of them. Anyway, there's no shortage of stick bushes around here. Jeez. Like a scrub land. I've never been to this biome before. It's pretty cool. Alright, that should be good there. Now we can take the, uh, the plant fibers. Let's type it in. This is what I'm going to make a cr crossbow. Make things much easier. Put these in here like that. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Alright. Craft that sucker up. Now we can't use it just yet because we don't have the ammo for it, which is the crossbow bolt. And uh, to make that, we're going to need some bird feathers. And keep an eye on the ground. Keep picking up uh, keep picking up stones. We're going to need a crap ton of stones. Pretty much pick up every stone you run across in this early stages. Because every arrow requires a stone cooked into a sharp stone. <laughs> um, a great way to get sharp... Uh, rather, a great way to get a bunch of stones is to break open these big rocks like this. Uh, you'll also get iron out of them, but can't really use iron at the moment, and uh, it takes forever with a stone axe to, to break those open. You might get lucky, though, and find a pickaxe in a car. Cars, abandoned cars are great places to, uh, to loot, to get uh, metal tools like a fire axe, and a gardening hoe, a pickaxe, stuff like that. For whatever reason, there's a really high loot chance inside of abandoned cars. So always check out abandoned cars you run across. And I'm actually going to walk back to the one I started next to. I can see it out there in the distance. Picking up all this cotton as I go. And, oop, sharp stones. Sweet. Um, now the reason I'm picking up this cotton is, uh, the, uh, the cloth fragments. I looted some of those off a of body, but we can craft those using the, uh, cotton. And again, you can't just put them anywhere. They have to be in the specific spot, unlike Minecraft. So, in the center, put them one on top of each other like that, and we can craft the cloth fragments. Sweet. And with several pieces of those, we can make cloth armor. Which isn't all that great, but at this stage, um, better than nothing. Let's make a helmet. Okay. And I think gloves is all I have left. Sweet. Yep. Uh, better than nothing for sure. I'm hoping for a bird nest. Keep an uh, eye out for like a brown circular thing on the ground, which is a bird's nest. It looks like a bird's nest. I mean, it's easy to miss though, because it's small. 
Uh, normally those have uh, feathers in them or eggs or bird-related paraphernalia. Um, all right. I'm gonna check this car here, and then we'll start chopping down trees with our uh, new axe. We're gonna need a bunch of wood, uh, like a bunch of it. So I do that off camera, um, since it takes forever with these basic stone axe. Um, oh, there's a deer. It should be noted, if you do kill a deer, <laughs> be careful. Uh, the, whenever you can around its meat, the, the scent of that will draw zombies to you, so... When you go hunting, be sure you got a place to stash the meat, and just be prepared for zombies attacking. Ooh, there's nine feathers. Frickin' sweet. Come on, give me a pickaxe or something good. Oh, are you kidding? I don't think I've ever seen a stone axe come out of a car. That's so lame. Alright, well, it's better than nothing, I guess. This one's gonna get broken pretty soon, anyway. Let's take our uh, cloth armor, and how do we put that on? Well, up here at the top, there's a character tab. Let's select that. And um, there's a button right here. It looks like a hanger with some shorts on it. Click that, and that shows us our paper doll. All the different items we can use, which is quite a few. Let's stick the... Uh, Head on there and the gloves. Nice. Now we got a little bit of armor protection. You see, we get all sorts of stuff: uh, shirt, jacket, and uh, chest armor over that. So you can wear all those at the same time. You can, when you're fully kitted out, you can get quite a bit of resistance. Um, but we've only got four. Ah, better than nothing, though. Now, um, what else? Okay, let's start. Let's cook up some of these sharp stones. They got nine feathers. Heck yeah. That's awesome. And, uh, don't quite have enough sticks, but if we line up our sharp stones, our sticks, and our feathers as such, we can get some crossbow bolts. And these things are OP. Um, super easy to make, you know, real early game technology that uh, is a game changer, man. It really is. <laughs> Makes so taking down zombies so much more easy. Um, now, maybe in older videos you saw people put their ammo on the toolbar, you don't have to do that anymore. So, this is nice, because the way we have it set up, we only lose what's on the toolbar. So you don't lose your ammo if you have it set up the way I have it. Um, now, you might be thinking, what the hell, it's not working. Why is it not working? You, first the first bolt you shoot, uh, you have to hit the reload button, hit R, to load it up. Then it will work. So, if you run out of crossbow bolts and then you start making some more, you'll have to do that again. But, at this point, I mean, as long as you always have a stack of some bolts here and you just keep adding onto it and you never run out, you don't have to hit that reload button again. So, that's how that works. And, uh, I think it's, uh, two shots to the chest or one shot to the head will kill most zombies. And, uh, now, the stealth mechanics are very similar to Oblivion and Skyrim, and, uh, visually, I mean, with the whole eye and everything. But also, the sneak damage. So if you're undetected and you see a zombie off in the distance and you get a shot on them, it will do sneak double damage on them. So even if you hit them in the chest, it will instantly kill most of the zombie types. So that's that's pretty cool. But that's uh, that's how we get started with the very basics. I'm going to start chopping down some trees and do this off camera. I think it's a good wrapping up point. Um, yeah, yeah, the episodes run a little bit long. Um, okay, so... Uh, we'll be back with a part two of this and uh, show you some more techniques to survival. I uh, hope you enjoy, maybe learn something. Till next time, though, I hope you all have a good one.